morning, y'all. I'm heading over to Barbell Brigade to shoot a workout video, which is why my hair is kind of messed up a little bit. I just uh, styled my hair straight from bedhead, and I'll give you guys an industry secret. When you're doing your hair for camera, you only have to do it about 50 to 75% because the camera doesn't pick up as much detail as you do in person. So in person, if you're trying to meet the love of your life, of course you gotta hook up your hair, but the camera, since it doesn't see as much detail, you can do 50 to 75% and it looks good. So especially when I'm training and I'm moving around, you're not gonna be able to have like a fixed focal point on my head. So doing my hair like this, where there's a bunch of weird shit sticking out, it's gonna be cool. I'm really tired right now because uh, I'm, go, I'm going uphill, but I'm really tired right now because I just finished the powerlifting meet that I've been training really, really hard for. And that was yesterday, actually. So if you wanna see the progress video on that, make sure you head over to the Barbell Brigade channel and you can see the update video. But the reason why I'm training today is uh, I wanna get right into getting lean. So a lot of people, they also don't know how to transition from doing a powerlifting meet into going back into regular training because they uh, do the meet and then they get really, really tired and they take an entire week off and then when they come back, that's meatloaf barking by the way, when they come back, they're like, oh shoot, I feel like I lost all my gains or I completely fried myself and it's because you took like an entire week or two off. So. That's not something that you want to do and uh, because I'm going to be increasing volume, a lot of volume because I'm going to be emphasizing a lot more bodybuilding so that I can get more lean and shredded, that's not something I'm used to. I'm used to doing like triples, doubles, singles because of powerlifting so you slowly want to increase the volume so I'm, I'm making a full on video on that on the Barbell Brigade channel that I'm going to shoot today so if you want to learn more about that stuff make sure you head over uh, to the channel too. I think it'll probably be something called uh, how to transition back from a meet into bodybuilding. But I'm walking to the car, just taking a little walk today. Instead of walking through the house, because it's really nice and sunny and bright and it feels really good. And sometimes the sun gives me a boost of energy that coffee can't even do. So I'm just walking to the car. Oh, cool. It's Gio's mom. Hey, Ma. Hey, Ma. What do you mean? I'm not Ma. <laughs> You're Ma. I know I'm Ma. Get out of here. Why? You're hey. Hey, Meatloaf. Say hi. Hey, Meatloaf. Hey, Fanny. Hey. Are you done? No. All right, I'm, I'm going to go to the gym. I'll see you later, Ma. I know. Okay. Okay, bye. Yeah, I wonder why, why the door was open. Oh, okay, because I was going to pull the car out. Uh, okay, bye. I'm at 7-Eleven, and I just got my daily 7-Eleven, I can't even say it this morning, I got my daily 7-Eleven necessities, got my black coffee, that's how I like my coffee, it's black as you can see, try to keep it simple, uh oh, is it going to fall off, okay, I got my 7-Eleven water, and my 7-Eleven uh, PVC pipe, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, the PVC pipe is from uh, the competition. We took a lot of stuff from the gym, so I'm just bringing it back today, returning it there. And um, usually I take the truck on these days, which is the normal JK working day. But um, because I have a pretty big meeting in Beverly Hills later where we're negotiating our deal, I don't know when I'm going to get back. So I'm taking the Porsche, I'm going to go train, and then come back home, take a shower, and then meet up with Joe and Michael to go sign this deal. So in the meantime, Jill's gonna take the truck and take the dogs to the office because usually I take the dogs to the office at around 1 or 2 p.m. But uh, Jill's gonna take them because there are times where I get really busy and when I leave the dogs at home, when I come home, I can just tell that they're really sad. They're like, oh, no one's been with us all day. And I really feel like all they really wanna do, like even though we take them hiking and walk them around the neighborhood, all they really wanna do is just be next to us. So um, instead of me going to the meeting and then not knowing when I'm going to come back and then finally coming back to hang out with the dogs I just told you I was like hey you think it'd be a better idea if you just took the dogs to the office and she was like yeah so at least that way the dogs can hang out with people and just be with Gio the whole time until I get back so yeah time to head over to the gym my body is really really wrecked from the meet every time I do a powerlifting meet I feel like I got hit by a truck 
and I'm trying to re-energize myself. And yesterday I took two scoops of pre-workout and usually I don't even take pre-workout. My black coffee is my pre-workout. I like to keep it natural because I've tried a lot of stuff when I first started lifting when I was like 16, 17, 18. I used to take everything that GNC had to offer. And then I realized nothing really works. You know, like the, the main thing that works and, and this is even scientifically proven is if you can sleep eight to nine hours a day to recover, train hard and then eat good food, your body will be able to have a lot of gains and that's where most of the success lies. All the other stuff, like if you want to take creatine or glutamine or any of the other stuff, you want to make sure that you're hitting your protein and your carbs and keeping the fats low. You want to make sure you're sleeping enough. You want to make sure that you're training consistently. And if you're doing all those three, then you add, the, you add a little bit of that and it might give you an edge, but barely. So I just keep things hella simple now and I'm just trying to pass this information along to you guys. I know a lot of you guys, as soon as you start working out, you're like, how do I get a six pack in two weeks? Or how do I get big in two weeks? It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Training and working out and building gains, it's definitely a marathon. So it, it's all about the journey. It's enjoying the journey, enjoying lifting, enjoying making friends along the way. And I, I, there's a lot of supplements out there that don't really work. I think if you want to keep it really simple, if you do need a little booster, pre-workout does work because caffeine is a proven chemical. But other than that, I wouldn't recommend anything else except for protein powders because sometimes you just can't fit that much protein into your system. So being able to knock down one or two scoops of protein really helps it out or else you're just gonna be eating like steaks, chicken, and eggs all day, especially if you're like me where you're supposed to get over 200 grams of protein a day. I have to get at least one or two scoops of protein and just to help me meet that goal, especially with my uh, busy lifestyle. But other than that, the black coffee, the protein, my multivitamin, I don't take any other supplements. Thank you. All right, cool. Thank you so much. You too. I'm back at McDonald's getting my huge, which is the three artisan grilled chicken sandwiches. One's for Gio, two is for me. And I actually really like this sandwich because it's so low in fat that it allows me to eat a little bit more lenient later on. Each sandwich is only six grams of fat if you get it with no mayo. And each sandwich has over 35 grams of protein. So by eating two of them, I already fulfilled 70 grams of protein and only took up 12 grams of fat. So that allows me to eat maybe even a cheeseburger at night, maybe some skinny cow ice cream, something like that. So I'm back on the usual diet, back into the routine. Sometimes I actually like cutting because my life gets so routine that I don't have to worry about what I have to eat. Because there's a lot of times where like, because I do have the liberty to choose what I want to eat, whether it's pizza or whatever, and I get to eat all kinds of naughty, bad stuff, and I have so many options, then I'm kind of stuck with the burden of figuring out what I actually want to eat. But when I'm on a diet, and because I can only eat like five things, then I don't have to think about what I have to eat. It sounds like such a first world problem, but it makes my life smoother because I just go to my regular go-tos and then immediately I can get to doing the important stuff like getting to work or meeting with people and I don't have to figure out like some fancy ass place to eat at. So I just grab my sandwiches, heading over to the office, gonna give Gio one of them and then I'm gonna scarf down two and then I'm gonna head to our meeting in Beverly Hills. Hi, my bear. It's so funny. Because you, every time you're about to ask me stuff for the vlog, you always press record and go, hi, Mom Bear. And then I'm always Duh. like, hi, Mom Bear. What do you want me to but be? We've be a... spent like 10 minutes together, so there's no reason to say hi, Mom Bear, Pop Bear. You want to be all rude? No, I like it. Fine. Hi, my love. So I just competed in a powerlifting competition this weekend, 
and I tried my best to do my best and I think I did do my best given the circumstances and they can catch all of that stuff on the Barbell Brigade channel but one perspective that isn't caught in the video is the supportive wife's perspective what's going through your mind as a supportive wife when you watch your manly man husband warrior man Dorothraki leader lift What's going on in my mind as I'm watching you lift? Like you're on stage and I'm there? Or just the whole powerlifting experience. Like what goes through a wife's mind as she watches her husband go out there and try to be the best that he can be? Well, one is I'm trying to keep a super cuny environment for him because I don't want to stress him out at all. So I want to make sure that I play happy music, so that he's very happy uh, in the early, early morning. And I make sure that I'm super soft. I'm like, Papa, um, are you going to eat? And then if he wants me to drive because he just wants to focus, then I'm, I'm like the mom in the like little soccer van, like making sure everyone's good. Like, should you guys eat? Are you guys okay? And then uh, when it comes to seeing him on stage, I'm just like trying to be louder than anyone else because I'm just like, that's my paw bear. He's been training harder than anyone else here. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm thinking he's been training harder than anyone else has here. So I, I'm so proud of him right now. Like, I can fucking cry because it's tears of joy. And I just want to be like, go, paw bear, fucking kill that shit. So internally, it's like, you're the best. And I have to make sure that you hear how much I'm like backing you up, like how much I'm like in your corner. Are you ever worried about? my health or like if I'm gonna get injured or anything? Um, you don't really give me those worries. You really, I, I don't ever feel like you're Is it because I'm too weak and the weights I'm lifting isn't no, dangerous no, enough? No, you're like close to a 500 bench. Like that's four- 500 four, bench? I said 400. You said 500. 400 bench. I wish it was 500. You're close to a 400 bench, um, which is, for those of you guys that aren't aware, is four plates on each side. Like. I can't even deadlift that shit, right? Deadlifting is like, I can't pull it off the ground, but he's pushing it off his fucking chest. So that's really freaking scary. But I think that- Does that make you horny? Um, it de definitely doesn't turn me off. <laughs> what does that mean? Does it make you horny then? <laughs> it doesn't turn me off. I don't know if it makes me horny. I'm not all like, ooh, but- But I if your man like is horny. strong, if your man is strong, doesn't it, don't, doesn't it make you feel like, okay, cool, my, my man's man is strong. strong. That aspect turns me on, but the fact that you can bench four or five, that- But that's an indicator of how strong I am. It is an indicator, and I think, but I look at the overall picture, so I look at a macro view, and yes, that turns me on, but the micro, meaning the four plates, doesn't turn me on. Oh, okay, fine. Um, so, because- I've seen you train. I see all your precautionary measures. Like you're, you're all about like even before the workout, you warm up properly, you stretch properly. Like you wear all the safety that you need to wear. Um, you don't do like crazy suicide grip in a bench that's like you know you're, you're the bar can slip from your hand. So you do enough to show me that you're taking all the 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 proper you know measurements to like be safe. So I don't worry about your safety. I worry about the spotter or the loaders, like misloading the bar. You think it's one way and then because they fucked up, you get injured. That's what I worry about. So every time you even go up, I'm like looking at the weights and I'm like, all right, so he's gonna do this, this, all right, cool, he's good to go. Um, I look at that or like I worry about like the spotters, if you miss the lift, that they're not there to catch you for you and they get, they injure you. So those are the things that I'm just kind of like <laughs> over. That's very nice of you. I kind of love you, you know? Yeah, today, I mean, not today, but yesterday when I went for my third attempt squat, um, usually the third attempts, that's when, like, the person's going ham, but because of the circumstances, I had to lessen the squat. I don't want to ruin everything for the Bottle Brigade video, but every time I go for the third attempts on each one of those lifts, because they are pretty much close to what my human limit is, does that ever worry you, or do you ever go like, holy shit, I really hope he gets this? Like, uh, especially, especially when I try to attempt the 600 pound deadlift. So now I'm kind of weird because as of lately, you've get, been getting more nose run, like more bloody noses. Yeah. Um, and then I know you had eye surgery and, um, oh, I forgot I had eye surgery. Yeah. You have eye surgery. So when you're doing the heaviest, like closest to your PR, which is closer to like hundred percent of your max, like you said, your human potential. That's when I'm just like, oh my god, I hope like his, his eyes don't pop, pop out. out. And I'm like, I just hope like, you know, the equipment is good. Like, 
I again it's never something that I'm worried about you I'm just or a mistake that you might make I'm always afraid of the environment that's gonna fuck you up you know what I mean yeah. I, maybe I just think you're Superman Paul Bear. like I just feel like there's there's quite a little bit that you can't do so anytime wow. I see you up there, I'm just Are you like, speaking highly of me right now? Fuck, am I? Did I fuck <laughs> off? Do you wanna cut this? No! Why is it so hard for you to be cuny and speak highly of me? Um, uh, no, you I've told you this time and time again. Like I think you're a super capable person and there's like very little that you can't do. Like when you set your mind to something, like you you not only do it at, you know, above average like what is it, potential or like you do it like just better than anyone, you know, uh that's average can do it um but then when you really put your mind to it then you excel and you're like amazing at it so that's why i never feel like there's much that you'll fail at so i think when i do see you fail that actually disappoints me more you know what i mean not to put any pressure on you but i'm yeah. just like oh okay so he is a human like he does make these mistakes oh fine yeah no it's not bad it's great you know because it's just yeah. like and again, I'm not like, just because you failed, I'm not thinking like, ah, we, what a pussy. Like, I'm not thinking that at all. I'm I still make like, you horny, right? Yeah, you still make you horny. <laughs> Fine. Does that make you happy? Fine. Yes, you still definitely make me horny, but right. yeah, I, I think I think you kill it every time. And I'm always Thank like, you. fuck yeah, you fucking kill this. Thank you, my bear. And I was like, other people are gonna fuck up and mess you up. That's what I'm thinking. Look at her cuny feet on the couch. Hey, hey, hey. hey. See you walking. Fine, I gotta go to a meeting. Okay. See you later, Mob Bear. Fine, I love you. I love you. Bye, kids! driving home but there's a shit ton of traffic and then it just hit all of us how hungry we were and I realized that I get way hungrier from meetings and thinking than I do from working out so that makes me think how come it doesn't burn extra calories than to think like I feel like I should be shredded the more that we think don't you agree yeah I'm so hungry I can't think right now I want to eat so bad and the problem is when you get hungry when you're thinking too much and then all of a sudden you realize you're hungry is that you don't start craving healthy foods, you start craving... Crave the worst foods. Yeah, like right now I'm so tempted to like stop at McDonald's before we get Oh back. my God, you know what I'm craving right now? What? Hash browns, the McDonald's hash oh, brown. Oh shit. Cause I, I, and I just started um, my diet today. Oh no, so you can't go to McDonald's. Yeah, you know what's also weird? Oh, like. Shit. Like just yesterday, I bought some ice cream and Reese's peanut butter cups and some Kit Kats. Oh no! I bought those, right? Because I was like, oh, okay, this is my last day. I'm going to cheat and then go ham. But then when I bought them, I'm like, uh, it's okay. I don't, I don't really feel like eating them. So I left them in the package. But this morning, just because I knew I was on a diet when I saw them on top of the fridge, no. now I really wanted to eat them. I'm like, why the fuck is it just in <laughs> one day? Yeah, now it's forbidden. Man, if 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 thinking really burned as much calories, as we would be fucking out, bodybuilders. Yeah, nerds would, nerds be, the would be the buff as fuck. That's not fair. So hard. That's so not fair. It's not. Are you hungry, Michael? I'm kind of hungry now. What's your favorite food when you're hungry? Do you think of healthy food or do you think of like the most unhealthy food? Think of like ramen noodles. Oh! Like the pork bone, the more fatty the broth, the oh. better. What's your favorite ramen place in LA? Uh, I like Shinsengumi in um, and Rosemead. Oh, really? I do. Have yeah. you been to Serpent Ramen in K Town? I have been as well, yeah. I like Shinsengumi better. What? But my favorite one out of everything is Ichiran in Japan. Oh my god, Ichiran oh. is so good. I The flavor of Ichiran in my mouth, I still like can taste it. 
That's how so good. good. It, it left a lasting memory on me. You know what Gina said, I think? It's like the glory hole of ramen places. Why is it the glory hole? Because it's like, you know, you order your ramen, they open the door, they bring the ramen out, and then they close the door, and that's about it. You never see who gives you the service, you just see the ramen, and that's all you see. I see the person's hands sometimes. You see the person's penis as well. She's not even trying <laughs> to make money right now. She just had a sign that said, everything is a blessing. Who, that girl walking in the yeah. back? Yeah. What I guess the she's hell? taking money. What? That's LA. LA is so crazy. You have random, like, homeless people, but then they don't even look homeless sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then you're wondering if they're panhandling because they're not really asking you for money. But the cardboard says some weird thing on it. Like, sometimes I see people with just jokes on there. Like, knock, knock, who's there? And they just say something weird, like a little bird. And you're like, what? <laughs> Wait, so do you want money? Or, like, what the hell's going on? What the hell do you think you're doing? This is one of the weirdest 101 exits that I've ever seen. So I lived in LA my whole life, and 101 is a freeway, it's like one of our biggest freeways in LA, but I have never seen this 101 entrance. This is weird, so this is a 101, and then our entrance is through here? No, it's the next one. Oh, it's through, oh, okay, I thought it was up there, never mind. Luxurious LA homes. Yeah, so we're all, oh, see, look, see all those tents? Those are the luxurious LA homes. LA, it, it's so weird, like, they'll be in Beverly Hills, and then right next door is a bunch of homeless people. Yep. I'm so hungry. That'll bite you. Do you feel like you prefer? prefer my system? So I'm I guess like, I'm going to... <laughs> We don't have David here today, so it's a little bit off, because we're used to David's energy, but, um, it's all good. I think uh, <laughs> it was a little bit different because we were so doing a conference prefer... on the on so the I webcams. Guess, um, so the dynamic was a little bit different, but it's cool too because you just give them time to speak. They give you time to speak. In person, everyone's talking at the same time almost, so it's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, 